So we're connecting live on Facebook. All right, so I'm just gonna share this out real quick before we get going with our live broadcast this evening. Share this to my Facebook page. Give people a couple minutes to jump in before we, we get rocking and rolling. That's fantastic. All right, so this is in, this is in, this is in here. Share this out. All right, I'm gonna share this here, share this here. All right, we're going live in just a second. Let's start a minute. Give it a couple minutes for some people to pop in. I know some people are jumping in right now, and then we'll we'll get this party started. Yes. Share this out and get some people popping in. I got a couple people hopping in here. We're gonna go live in three, two, and one. What's up, everybody? Dead Girl here coming at you live from my house. And joining me today is the beautiful Linda Jansen of Deviant Dolls. We're gonna talk about some of her kooky creations. <laughs> How are you doing today, Linda? So I'm hiding behind my whiskey glass from my house. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> I got, I'm hiding behind my uh, grapefruit beer here this evening. I hope Ooh. everyone's got their cocktails. Yes, I'm drinking whiskey tonight. Oh, girl. Mm. I got to work in the morning. I can't go whiskey. It's, it's oh, not in a work yeah. night. Ah, I have nothing to do tomorrow, so I'm drinking whiskey. Oh, there you go. You're good. Now, yes. for, the, for those of you that don't know you or are not familiar with Deviant Dolls, can you tell us a little bit about you and about the company and, and your fun creations? Sure. So as you said, my name is Linda and I am the purveyor, creator, and seller of Deviant Dolls. And I do uh, avant-garde art dolls that are a bit weird and quirky and odd, um, like this little guy right here. She's fun. <gasps> Oh. We'll get into these later, but I do stuff like that. I also do a line of Day of the Dead animals, like this one. Oh, he's beautiful. Yes. Basically, if I can cut a face off of it or I can paint a skeleton on it, I, you know, I paint. I've been doing them for about five years. I started um, making them after my Halloween party uh, in 2015 when Hurricane Sandy came through and I needed to throw something together real fast for a tent. So I made, I don't know, probably five or six of them and threw them up under the tent. People loved them and they were like, you should sell these. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and you know, one thing, fate, karma, kismet, whatever universe happened. And I just kind of fell into selling them. So now, you know, five years later, I'm still slinging dolls with no faces. So <laughs> it's great, it's great. I love it. the dream, I love it. So it's been about five years since you've started this road. Um, what what gives you that inspiration, that drive to create? Oh gosh, I you know, I I love to create. I've always been a creative person. When I was little, you know, I was drawing, coloring. I would make Barbie houses out of cardboard boxes. So yes. I've always been a, a creator. Um, and that's where I'm truly happy is when I can make something. Um, and these are great because it, it, they're fun. They're quirky. They don't, they're not serious. Like I don't take any of this seriously. So there's not this pressure to be right. perfect. You know, if something's off, well, that's just how she is. So it's very relaxing for me, you know, and there is something to be said about coming home or having just a, a crap day and I get to come home and, you know, I get to bludgeon a doll. <laughs> it's just, it, there's something cathartic about that and I love it, so. It's a good uh, way to get your frustrations out. It totally is, and, and people love them. I mean, I do what I would consider very original pieces. Uh, you know, I, I am... I have been creative, but I'm not a drawer. I mean, this is an example of one of my drawings. I can't, this is a, a custom piece I'm working on for somebody right now. And you can see I have no drawing skills. So Oh, we're, we're, have, we're right there. We're together yeah. in that drawing 
drawing aspect. Yeah, I don't, I don't draw, and the outline <laughs> of this is printed, so I just drew on top. I don't draw, so this is how I, I can do art, and and I just, I love it. That's my inspiration. It's just fun. It's fun. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. See, I'm glad that you're, you found your your happy place that you can create things from. That that warms my heart. Thank you. I like that. <laughs> now I understand I know we talked about this previously and I've run into you at all different conventions and, and you know we met through mutual friends but you you always have fun little stories that go with each piece that you create and every time I've asked you about one you've always got this great story behind yep. it and I know that you kind of put that tag on like your Etsy site or you know your your home site where you're selling these where do you get these ideas from to give these fantastic backstories to these awesome creations that you come up with uh, really, the backstory comes. Well, it, it depends because sometimes I'll make it all based on a backstory. Like I'll just have some random thought in my head, you know, and and I'll make a doll around that. And sometimes I'll finish a doll and I'll be like, "What is your backstory? What are you telling me? What, what what's your what's your gig? What's your jam?" And uh, so it just really kind of depends. I mean, I pull inspiration from all kinds of places. I have an old school. I reach for it now, but it's out of reach and I can't get it with the headphones. But <laughs> I have an idea book that's, you know, that thick. Oh, wow. Full of ideas and things I want to do and just random phrases. And I have a book by my bed. And sometimes I'll wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and be like, ah, oh, I got to write that down. And, you know. Um, so, yeah, my inspiration really comes from Edward. The backstory uh, sometimes pushes the, the creation forward. And sometimes it is a product of the creation. It just kind of depends on on what it is. Like, like Cherry, for example. This one, let me see if I can pull her out. Like Cherry, she's she, beautiful. I because I know you love her, and I she's did. fun because she's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and that's hilariously funny. Um, but my backstory for her was that you know, poor Cherry was just out in the garden one day picking her tomatoes, and booyah, they come back and they bit her back, you know. But so this is an example of a backstory leading the doll. Um, and then I've got, let's see here. Uh, I love her. I okay, do. But, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk JD into maybe getting her. Should do. When is your anniversary? In Make November. We got we got a ways. Oh, you still got some time, but that's okay. But she's uh, but, phenomenal. But my half birthday's coming up, so maybe. Oh, see, that's perfect. <laughs> and like this one, this is Alfaba. Oh. And this one, actually, I wanted to do a Wicked Witch of the West doll desperately because I felt like the Wicked Witch was kind of you know unloved in that whole thing. So. I made this doll, but I wanted to make her different. Like, I didn't want to do the black dress, so I put her in lingerie. Oh, she's she's a sexy oh. witchy. She is, because you may be wicked, and you may be unloved, but damn it, you're still a lady, and sometimes you just want to feel pretty. <laughs> so this is an example of the backstory coming after the doll. And I think we can all identify with wanting to still feel pretty and sexy, and she's, I love her. I love the green. It's such a beautiful uh, color. She's a good one. Now, She's what do you kidding. use? What's your um? What medium do you work in? Like, what kind of paints do you use to paint uh, your dolls? Or does oh. it depend on what, you know, um, what the base is? It depends on what the base is, and it depends on what I I want the the finished thing to be. Um, I work mainly in acrylic, uh, because if I make a mistake, it's easy to paint over. You know, right. um, spray paint is always good because I can get that really good coat on there. Uh, like yeah. this guy, the corners is getting caught on Alfaba. This little guy, I finished him. Oh, let me bring him down here. Oh, he's, he's spray pretty. paint, but he's color change spray paint. So see if I turn him, his he changes color. Oh yeah, I can see kind of that little green tint to him, and he's got some yellows in there. Oh, he's beautiful. Uh, thank you. So yeah, sometimes I just like to mess around with stuff. I mean, I've covered dolls in paper mache. I've covered them in. Um, uh, wallpaper, I, you know, really anything, anything I get my hands on. I mean, my motto really with doing anything art is I, I don't care what that thing was meant to do. I care what I can manipulate it to do. So I'll work in any medium. I've worked in crowns. I've worked in, you know, I've done Sharpies. I've done, um, oh, I did a, one doll, I did a henna. Like I used henna stain and I did a whole yeah. henna stain on the doll. So I just, I mean, I work in everything, but I guess probably my preferred medium is acrylic. Okay. 
easy, easy to work with. And I know you've done a lot of new, like, Day of the Dead type pieces have been Mm -hmm. kind of your more recent creations, and there's a ton of them up on your Etsy site, and they're so pretty. Thank you. They're fun. Uh, Yeah, I started doing the Day of the Dead probably, like, maybe six months after I started the dolls. I came home one day, and somebody had left a big bag of dolls on my front porch. Oh, nice. I love it. And uh, in in this bag was a bunch of these... um, statues I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna do with these so I sat on them and then I came up with this idea so I basically just I make them day of the dead so I spray paint them I love and him he's a little star he's so cute he's like a, a pencil holder or, or um I was put a sponge or something in there but yeah I basically start with a naked statue you know or even something like this little guy see he's a, a ram and oh, he's, he's a box Put your little treasures in there. Oh, so they're they're all yeah. functional pieces. It's not just something you can hang on your wall. It's something that actually has a good use. Yeah, some of them are. I like to work with functional pieces. I mean, knickknacks are awesome and great, and I love them. But I think that people respond more if it's got a function to it, yeah. or if it's got something weird and quirky to it, or if it's yes. a weird and quirky animal. You know? Yes. Yes, I mm-hmm. do. <laughs> I like a functioning thing. I, I like artwork too, too, but I do. I like something that I can actually have a use for you know what I, I mean? think yeah I think it's because when you use something you think of that artist and so for me it's like a longevity calling card you know like every time you go and you pick up your whatever out of this thing you'll be like oh, I remember that crazy girl like with the wig Linda's oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. now speaking of wigs you always have a different wig on and I remember the first couple of times that threw me, and I was like, where is that rad chick? And then you start talking, I'm like, oh, my God, she's got yeah. like 50 freaking wigs that she rocks. <laughs> so Linda does not always have this beautiful blue hair. It can be pink. It could be yellow. It could be whatever. It's all all different colors for her. I like to wear wigs. I think they're fun. And, you know, here's the thing. It shows yeah it's business and yeah you know we're there to do the thing but you know it's gotta be fun if it's not fun then it's work and nobody wants to work and so I like to wear wigs because people a people remember me they're like who's that crazy girl in the blue hair I can attest Um, to that yes yes we uh, do remember you (laughs) and and also it lets people know when they come into my space look leave the drama and the shenaniganry outside like we're gonna have fun in here we're not taking this really seriously you know no heavy conversations about anything we're just going to come and have a good time up in this space so i I like that motto now just to kind of circle back here um you mentioned that you had somebody leave a box of dolls on your porch is that is that a thing that happens on the norm do people just leave stuff for you to create with yeah Oh, yeah, I love it. I'll come home on a random day, and there'll be a big bag with a note. Hey, girl, I thought you could use these dolls. And I'm like, what is in here? Uh, <laughs> Sounds yeah, like so Christmas morning. It is. It's fun. And then, you know, the juices start going. And then the best part about that is I'll see them out at a show. And I'll say, oh, my God, do you remember you gave me that doll? Look, here it is. And then they look at it, and they're like, I can't believe that that's the doll that I gave you because it's usually completely different um, than what it was when, I mean, it always is completely different from right. what it was when they gave it to me, so. Well, they all it's get fun. this really cool, they all undergo this transformation. So it's like, okay, here, here's your original skin and here's what you've morphed into. Yeah. So it's it's definitely very, very different to see them in the, the first skin versus, you know, the evolved skin. Yeah, and sometimes they'll even evolve from their second and third skin. You know, because like I said, I mean, sometimes the doll, I'll, I'll do something and then something will happen and I'll be like, kind of like that. So I change it. <laughs> or sometimes, you know, stuff will break and I'll be like, well, that's just how it is now. And I incorporate that into the piece. Like I said, I just, you know, they're supposed to be fun and and you just kind of different... go with the flow. Yeah, you kind of go with it. You know, and they're all one of a kind. So once I do one, that's it. That's the only You don't one. do the repeater. Whoa. No, I honestly, I get it out once. I don't think I could have, I don't think I could recreate it if I tried. Um, you know, I think the only time I've ever done a repeat is um, if somebody asked me for a custom piece because they saw it at a show and then I've sold it and they're like, right. but I really wanted that one. So sometimes I'll do something that's close, but I never do the, the exact, exact same, same thing. Again, ever. Mm-mm. And, and even if you come to my table, you'll see all different 
Yeah, I've never seen the same stuff at your booth, and I've, I've seen you at quite a few shows, and it's always different stuff, whether it's the Day of the Dead things or the dolls themselves. It's always something different, and it's kind of fun to watch over the weekend as I pass by your little sales space there to see you know them dwindle because people love these things, and I mean, I do too. I think they're phenomenal. No, yeah, thanks. They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, along with um, getting the drop-off, you know, surprise donations, where do you usually go to find, you know, your bases that you're using to create? Oh, uh, everywhere. I, I go to thrift stores, estate sales, uh, yard sales. I have to be kind of careful at yard sales, though, because, um, you know, it, it never fails. There's always a little girl at one of the sales and I'll pick up like six of her dolls that she has treasured and taken care of. And, you know, I'll pick up all of them because, you know, they're a dollar each and she'll be like, Oh, do you have a daughter? She's going to love these. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Something like that. We'll go like, with that. Go with that. You know, kids love me though. It's weird because kids love me. Uh, you know, if, if I go, if I'm out at a show, the kids are the ones that beeline to me and they're like, oh my God, this is so cool. They want to take pictures. They want to show me stuff that they've done. So kids love me, but I don't know. I just think it's weird to tell some poor little girl at a, thrift, at a, a yard sale that I'm going to cut the face off of her doll. <laughs> I'm going to mangle this thing and it's going to be gonna awesome when it. I'm done with it. Yeah, so I think it's different when you're at a horror convention because I feel like the kids that are there get it. But, oh, they you know. do. They we our our horror convention kids are very unique creatures, and they totally get it. I think more than some of the adults do, which is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Well, and even outside because I do a lot of shows outside of of like Spooky Empire or you know Comic Cons and things like that. You know, I'll do just regular shows like a Will's Affair, and the kids love me there. They do. I think it's just because they're colorful and weird and different, and there's not this sense of this is art and this isn't yet. They just like right. them. So. See, I think that's fantastic. Now, I know you mentioned you do other shows, so you do a lot of horror conventions. I've seen you at shows like, um, you know, Spooky Empire, like Florida Supercon, a bunch of other shows in the past. Um, and we were talking about this a little bit before that Spooky was one of the first shows that you did. How did you, how did you end up doing doing that? Uh, so, um, I, I, I've volunteered at Spooky for, for many years. And, um, when I first started this right after my Halloween party, uh, Dina, Bina came up to me and said, Hey, um, we uh, are doing as a volunteer core for Spooky Empire, uh, a table at Spooky Mayhem, uh, before the show starts for one of our volunteers who was very sick and needed, uh, a major medical procedure. Okay. And so we, as volunteers, all brought stuff to sell at this table uh, out by the pool. And I decided, I said, well, I'm going to bring some of these dolls. Because everybody tells me I should sell them. So I'm going to bring them. I'm going to see what happens. Give I had a shot. No expectations. We'll try it. I didn't even charge people. I was just like, give me whatever you want. It's for, you know, a good cause. So if you want to give me, you know, 30 bucks, just do it. That's and awesome. uh, I set up. So, yeah, I brought, like, six of the dolls that I used up a little bit and made them fancy. And I brought... Um, I think at that point I had one day of the dead piece and then I brought my matchbooks with me and I got rid of everything within a half hour, 45 minutes. Oh, wow. And I'm like, I mean, I had people beelining and they're like, I need that one. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> All right. Give me, I need your money. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it was for our friends, but I'm I like, know. yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. So I, I, so yeah. So then that next year, uh, I had to tell Dina that I wasn't going to volunteer anywhere, that I was going to get a table. That's and awesome. it, I've been I've been vending ever since at Spooky. So Spooky was my first my first show technically, uh, and nice. it's been my first convention. And you know it's Spooky, so it's you know it's my family, and I love yeah. it. I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows to do every year because it is truly like a family experience there. It is. It's it's a very unique show. That's that's for sure. And it has that huge oh. sense of family and community. Even oh, it's totally you know nice. when you go. So it's Deviant Dolls is something definitely that fits right in with that. You know, with the spooky crowd. But you also do like, like I said, you do shows like Supercon that are you know anime friendly and stuff too. And yep, I think it's awesome. Do you do very well at those shows too? Uh, yeah. I mean, it always depends on the crowd. Yeah. Uh, but I do really well, I think, at all shows because, well, for a couple reasons. Number one, I feel like what I do is really out there. And it's not something I see at every show. It's not, you know, the t-shirt vendors and the, you know, and those vendors are all great. But 
when you go to these cons, you see a lot of these same type of vendors. So right. my stuff really stands out. Uh, and I'm also very personal. I mean, you come into my space. If you buy something, that's great. If you don't buy something, that's great too. Let's just have a conversation and talk. And, you know, I don't pressure people, but I'm very engaging with people. You're which is really extremely out of, engaging. Which is really out of my introvert element, but, you know, I like to do it. I don't know. It's just something about these shows. Uh, but, yeah, I just try to be really engaging with people and, you know, create kind of this safe place where people can come and just hang out. Which is fantastic. And as a fan, I appreciate that. You know, I think that that's a, a phenomenal thing. And it definitely it, – I'm more apt to buy – from someone that's engaging in the way that you are versus somebody that's just kind of standing there like looking at his or her phone or, you know, busy doing something else. It's that engaging that kind of helps to sell it. So I can appreciate that from the the purchasee standpoint. Yeah. And, you know, the engaging is genuine. Like I really, I'm never, I never go to these shows going, I have to sell. I just go, well, hey, if it happens, it happens. That's great. You know, but you're, you're very laid back, which which yeah. I appreciate. Now, I know um, you also do commissions. Yep. So when you do your commission work, do you usually take, like, are you open to ideas with them? Like, do you guys kind of go back and forth? Or how does that work? Do they reach out to you through, like, Facebook or your, your website? Uh, yeah. I mean, you can reach out to me via my uh, website, which is deviantdolls.net. Um, and there's my email, all of my contact everything is there uh i told i love doing commission because there is something about somebody bringing an idea to me and saying can you do this and i'm like yes yes i can <laughs> let's try it uh i love doing commissions they're just super fun uh and and usually what happens is some they'll come to me and say i have an idea for this can you do this uh and as long as it's not a faithful recreation of something i can usually get get us there you know in other words like if you came up to me and said well i want a chucky doll okay that's great but just know that if i make it it's not going to be your standard chucky doll doll. if you want that there are five billion other people that will do that for you i'm going to make you a chucky doll and i'm going to put bunny slippers on it because i find that hilarious you know Uh, and usually people that come to me for know that that's going to be the case Uh, but we just go back and forth on details and sometimes people will say well this is what I want I'm working on a commission right now um, where it's up to me what I want to do so I'm kind of bouncing some ideas off of of, uh, that client uh, to see if we can come together but yeah I mean commissions are fun I love doing them I loved them. I think they're just less stressful because I know what I already know what I have to do. Like, I don't have to come up with the idea. Yeah. I already know. You've already kind of had that that little conversation, so mm-hmm. it's already like, all right, we're, we're yeah. good. We know where we're going yeah. from here. Yep. That's awesome. So, yeah, so deviantdolls.net yes. for commission work. Um, yes. Definitely hit Linda up. Check out her Etsy. Comb through it. Spend some money. Yes. Um, now, I, I understand that you um, – you are not only an amazing artist, but you're an award-winning artist. Who told you that? I heard through a little birdie that you Ooh, won a couple what? of different contests and awards there, Missy. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about that uh, one. How did that come about, and what well, event was this at? This is my Maker Fair Award. Uh, <laughs> I think Maker Fair. I laugh because I still can't believe I, I won an award. Uh so I do Maker Fair every year. It's a great uh, event for makers uh, down at Central Florida Fairgrounds. And so this is given out. Um, each one of the people in charge of an area pick their favorite maker. And so uh, a nice gentleman named Pete picked me out, and I got this fancy ribbon. Oh. And it says Maker of Merit. Yes. So yes. it hangs in my, in my office right now. Um, and then I also... Uh, won a grant from the uh, from it's called the uh, Awesome Grant Foundation, and they are a art based grants group that gives out a thousand dollars every month to an artist. You have to do a whole you know uh, proposal submission, um, but they give a thousand dollars out to that artist to create that art, uh, and they like things that are community based, right. you know, that the public can enjoy as well. So I uh, applied and got a grant and I created uh a, of course a creepy doll tree. Um well, I re- why would you not? 
would I not do that? Uh, so I, because uh, it's not in my wheelhouse, right? <laughs> not at all. Uh, no. Uh, so what I did is I created the, uh, uh, um, in Mexico, in a little town in Mexico, there is a doll tree. Uh, it's basically a big old tree that a lot of doll heads and doll parts are, are tied to. Um, and there's a, a legend behind it. You can look it up. It's called the Isla de las Micanas tree. Uh, okay. And and uh, it's really kind of cool, uh, but it, it's uh, haunted, allegedly, and it's just really creepy, but it's still very beautiful. So I created uh, a tree, basically, out of PVC, great stuff, and tree limbs, and then tied uh, hundreds of doll parts to it. <laughs> Uh, but I like to make things in there. I love interactive art. Uh, so this was actually installed in the lobby of City Arts Factory for the Dia de los Muertos and oh, Monster Oh, nice. Factory. Um, so it was the centerpiece of the show. Oh, sorry, my earpiece is falling out. You're good. <laughs> uh, so it, it was installed in the lobby, and I, I, I wanted to make it interactive. Um, so what I did was I got a whole bunch of Barbie doll parts, and people right. could come in and write the name of a loved one who had passed Aww. and then put it under the tree. And then what I did after the event is I took all the doll parts, I brought them home with me, I put them in a box, a really nice box, and um, I have uh, disposed of them in an ancient, well not ancient, but in a voodoo tradition. In so, an ancient tradition. Like, like in an ancient-ish <laughs> tradition. It is ancient. Uh, yeah, so, but I, uh, so I paid that respect and because I'm from New Orleans so I paid that respect and uh, awesome. yes, it's beautiful it was amazing so yeah technically I'm a Dubla award winner oh I love it now the the City Arts Factory um, where you had that displayed in is that something that they displayed those winners at is it a yearly thing is it like a monthly thing how, how often do they do those well the Austin Band's given out every month okay uh, in particular it wasn't tied to the gallery that's just where I installed oh okay the piece. okay sorry yeah. that's just where I decided to install the piece uh because that's the big art show that they do in October which is all day of the dead and Halloween art perfect. so I'm like well this is appropriately perfect yes um yeah so that was up there for a month I have pictures somewhere I'm sure I'm trying to I don't think I can find them on my computer fast enough but that's okay you'll have to share them with us one day and I we'll We'll share them along with everyone else so that they can see them because I would have loved to have seen that tree. It sounds amazing. It's really awesome. I actually used the tree of the next year for my Halloween party. I put it in my <laughs> yard for my Halloween party. It was it was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. It was a big ass tree. I don't that, have it any too big. But that's was, fantastic. I love it. Now I know uh, you're working on some current pieces. Um, is there anything uh, that you can you can share with us? Well, let's That's see within here. arm's reach since I know you're you're tied to your headset. <laughs> I'm tied to the headset because of the echo, echo, echo. Yes. Okay. Um, I have this piece. I'm almost finished with him. I'm going to do some little stuff down here at the bottom, I Aww. think. But he's pretty awesome. I love him, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, go. Let's hear it. Oh, tail up. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it. A little heart butthole. Yes. That's it signature that's how you know it's a deviant dolls piece is the tail is up is a heart butthole and the other reason i love this piece that came on him like that is like, that it was safe big, for I, facebook i just painted it it's just two circles <laughs> it's fine uh so that one i did um i've got he oh it's adorable got... i do love him and that one you're gonna put him i'm assuming you're gonna put him up on etsy all right he'll go up uh awesome. this week uh, buy him, someone buy him, just for yeah, the, the balls back. alone. Just, just for the two circles. Wink, wink. Work, right, so I'm working on this collection right now. <gasps> oh, look at him. So I have the Deviant Dolls, the Day of the Dead Zoo, and then I have the Jason stuff with a Z. So <gasps> I get animals and I put little Jason faces on them. That's awesome. I'm working on him. Now, but, is that acrylic that you're using on his face, or are you using something else for, for those little masks on, on the fur? Oh, for the, no, this yeah. is a, a, a combination, because okay. it's fur. It's a combination of, of different kinds of paint, so that it okay. sticks, and it doesn't, um... Gotcha. Like, He's oh, adorable. I love him. Yeah. I'm working on this doll. Now, I want to be Ooh. safe for Facebook, so I'm going to cover up a naughty part. That's all but, right. 
just have to imagine <laughs> what I'm covering up. But he's cool because he's got see the gold oh, flank on yes. him. Oh, yes. And he's got his little wings. <gasps> I love his wings. And he's got a little. He's got a little. Um, he is. He is. Let's just say very accurate. He's so anatomically he's, correct. He's anatomically correct. <gasps> and, and I, I have, see a flash. Oh my God, he's so awesome! And in the three years, five years I've been doing this, I've only come across three dolls that are anatomically correct. Really? Every time I so paint, it's I not a it's normal weird. thing for you to find then. Oh no, 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 no! So every time I find one, I paint it gold. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I'm like, well, if it's there, I I'm might as well just, highlight it. I might as well just paint it. Let's see, what else do I have on my little track? Oh, I have this little guy. He's not. He's not. Uh, uh, new, but he's cool. I'm gonna point the camera down. Oh, look, so, at, look at them pearls. Yeah, pearl, yeah, wait, there's more. There's more. Because you can't have Frankenfurter <gasps> with Rocky and his gold lame short shorts. Oh, Rocky. Now, do you sell yeah. those? Is that a pair? Or are they sold separately? Wait, there's more. <gasps> We're not and done yet. You can't have that without having Eddie's. Severed head. Yes. This is a set. So it's all three pieces. I call it three's a crowd. That's so fabulous. Get, yeah, so you get Rocky, Frank, and Furter, and Eddie. So I'm touching him up a little bit. I think I'm going to do a little something with, with uh, Rocky's face, maybe. So he's out because I'm going to work on him and update him. Because, you know, Spooky Empire's coming up. So Yes. They're coming up in, they moved their show to August. They were supposed to be actually happening this weekend. Oh. Um, but they're doing a, an online thing this weekend, so I'm going to be checking out their Facebook page for their live fun shenanigans, and then a lot of artist friends like you are getting ready for their August show here in Orlando. Yes, I'm very, very excited, because I miss all of you guys, and hopefully we'll be safe enough where I can hug faces, but that probably won't happen. <sighs> So. I as as weird as this sounds, I miss hugging my friends. <laughs> hugging friends too. I mean, you know, I hug on the dolls all day, but it's not the same. Yeah. And, and and I love my husband, and I hug him all day, but it's I miss my girls. Mark, because my husband's working from home right now, and I told him I said, when you go back to work, I'm gonna have like a mental breakdown because I'm not gonna be able to come hug with your face all day. Right. <sighs> when I'm having a, a rough moment, I'm not gonna be able to come in and be like, I need some loving. Some love. So yeah, so that's gonna be weird. But I've got some real. Oh my god, the stuff that I have lined up for Spooky is gonna be amazing. Uh, I, I would give you a sneak peek. Here, I'll just slide this way, and you can see maybe a little bit of what I'm working on oh, back here. A we'll slide bit. This way. And maybe if I slide this way, you can see a little bit of what I'm working on over here. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've got some really cool stuff that I'm very very excited for, and I figure. Um, since it's, it's the the May show, but it's in August, and it's my favorite show, I'm gonna just pull out all the stops and just bring my. Yes, energy. it's gonna be awesome. So definitely, you'll want to stop by and see me. You can tell me because I've got the creepy dolls. <laughs> I'll see you a mile away with that beautiful oh, hair. Yeah. You'll probably hear me before you see me. So That's like, oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> you'll know it. You'll know it's me. You'll know yeah. it's me. Well, I can't wait to see the new thing that you're going to be coming up with because you always you never cease to amaze me they're Aww. always wonderful they're always spooky and unique and just it's stuff that I've never seen anywhere else oh god that makes my heart happy you know I do them because I love to do them and they make my heart happy when I do them and, and at the end of the day I have them all lined up the ones that I've done and I'm like you're awesome and you're awesome and you're like 90% awesome but I'm going to get you there and it's <laughs> my heart happy but it, when other people come up to me and they're just like, holy nerds, this is the cool, I just, I can't even tell you, like, that to me is worth the price of admission all day long. Like, I'll take that over, you know, I mean, you know, sales are nice, but I, I just, I love hearing people say, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It just makes my heart happy. It really does. And as an artist, that's, that's what you want. You want that reaction, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't matter what a reaction is. I mean, I even get excited when people walk by me at, obviously not at my horror conventions, but like at some of my mainstream conventions, mm -hmm. and people will go, oh my God. <laughs> and you're like, yes. No, no, no. You know, 
or every so often I'll get that person that's like, have you found Jesus? Jesus. And, yeah, yeah. So I always get every once in a while I'll get, I'll get, uh, um, somebody like that. But even those guys, I'm just like, well, at least I invoked a reaction because I'm a, as an artist, it, and, and this is for any artist in any medium, that's what you want. You want somebody to, you want that a, acknowledgement, whether it's good or bad or creeped out, you want yeah. that. It doesn't matter. And hopefully maybe somebody will buy something, you know, but you just, you know, bonus. that's a bonus. You just want the, re I just want the reaction really. Now, do you have any pieces that you've done that you just, you can't, you can't part with that you find yourself going, oh, I'm going to keep him. No, no, I don't. <laughs> and, and honestly there, I have loved every single piece. And if, and if anybody out there in social media land wants to see all, everything I've ever made, if you go to my Instagram, Oh. I take pictures every time somebody gets something I take a picture of them holding it yes. and then I post it on Instagram I know that's backwards I should be posting things that I have currently but I do it backwards uh, so that's you can okay. go and you can see everything that I've ever sold in the whole you know time I've been doing this and and I love every single one that I've sold um, but honestly I just I I love them all if I can't I can't keep them all so I keep none of them you know I keep the photo of it I keep my little photo a little memory of, of what they were but girl, i live in a 1949 bungalow downtown <laughs> i have no space for nothing and i'm running i run five businesses out of my house so i oh, really god girl you're a busy <laughs> space no space so yeah i don't i don't keep any of them and i would much rather them get out you know i try to price them affordably so yeah. that they people they're approachable price wise for sure i mean i think my most expensive doll is like 75 Oh, and those geez, are the, that's, but most of them are, you know, 50, that's definitely, yeah. I mean, you're, you've always been very reasonable with all of your creations. You I just, know. I want to mount the world. It's a takeover. <laughs> what you guys don't know is the more they go out there, the more I take over the world. <laughs> I mean, now we know. So your, your, your plan's out there now. It's done. You've outed yourself. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm like every villain that tells the plan. At the end, and then they die. And, and then they get uh, busted, and it's like, uh, well, I guess I, I shouldn't have divulged my plans to the world. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> you were so close. So close. Uh, uh, one more year. One more year to take over. <laughs> so your next show we've got you going is, oh, let's see here, Spooky Empire, which is in August. And that's at the Wyndham. And do you have anything else planned after that? Or I know right now the world's in this whole realm of uncertainty with yeah. weird things happening. But other than Spooky, do you have any any other shows planned? Or is there anything else still happening? Well, I, I mean, like you said, everything's kind of up in the air. Um, yeah. I had shows booked and then after, uh, well, during COVID-19, of course, for safety, all of that uh, kind of got put on the back burner. So... Right now, the only thing I have lined up is spooky, uh, and I'm just kind of waiting. I mean, there will be other things. Don't panic. You will have plenty of time to see me out. Um, but <laughs> just kind of like most artists right now who do vans and do shows, like we're all just kind of sitting back going, well, we're just going to wait and see what happens. Yeah. Because we don't, because our events are classified as like sporting events because there's so many people that come through. Right. So we don't know. You know, things are opening, but we may not be able to go back. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So I right now, it. the only thing I have solid booked is, is spooky. Um, I may have something in Georgia at the beginning of August, okay. but that's kind of up here. So I'm not really saying too much about that one. I understand. Um, hopefully, uh, my October is always busy. So I'll be everywhere nice. in October. And you can always find me on the Internet. I don't hide very well, so <laughs> always find me on the interwebs. You're you're an easy girl to find. I got Alex Sanchez in the comment section piping in. He's like, "Damn, girl, I thought I was the only one multi-business tasking." Oh, I know. <laughs> me and Alex go way back. Yeah, no, I uh, I am. I have, like I said, five businesses. Two, three of them are not happening right now because of COVID. But I got right. two active, so we're just rolling with those. And of course, Deviant Dolls is full up and running and taking commissions oh, and. True. Mm -hmm. selling all your creepy things and you're getting some love in the chat Alex loves him some Linda and JD loves you too oh, <laughs> I get all of your faces I miss you so much we miss you too does anybody in there have any questions for Linda figured opening up a little Q&A yes 
Hey, Mary. We've got a bunch of people in here. Everybody's everybody's chiming in about how much they love you. I love you guys. I can't see the chat right now, but I heart all of you guys, too. It's, it's all the hearts. <laughs> and this little Rambox loves you, too. So, wait, he's a box? Yeah. Yeah, see, he takes his little little. <gasps> oh. Yeah, did I not? I thought I showed that earlier. Functioning. But yeah. He's and girl, tail up. <laughs> Covering it. There it There's is. There's the butt. There's but, my heart but oh, You can tell because some uh, there are other people that kind of try to do the Day of the Dead, but they don't do heart buttholes like I do. So remember, if it's a heart butthole, it's a deviant doll. Only if the tail is up. If the tail's, if the tail's not tail's up, up no. okay. All right, let me rephrase that. If it's got a heart butthole and the tail's up, that's it's, me. It's a Linda piece. Now we got JD's got a good question. He says, <laughs> um, "What's the biggest right. piece you've created?" And when are you making another Freddy house? Oh, oh my God. My oh, my God. I forgot about the Freddy house. <laughs> I forgot about those. Uh, okay, well, the biggest, like, size-wise doll I ever did, uh, I did a uh, I did a teddy bear version of the human centipede. Oh, God. I got one. It was so awesome. So I had three bears that were identical, and but they they were jointed, like the shoulders and the hips. So okay. I could, you know, put the arms however. God, I sat on these things forever. And then I'm like, I'm going to make a centipede. And my husband's like, you are not. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> so I made it, and I made him cry. Like the front bear was crying. Oh. And there was, I put little bandages on him. And so, and then I strung them together. And this thing was probably i mean he was probably a good three feet long he was massive if you go to my i think he might be on my facebook page like up at the top and photo isn't it i think he is so you can see him he's still because i love him so much but the best part about him was his name because there was three of them so you had constance pat and sean <laughs> Cause that's funny. It's funny. No, it's not scary if they're funny. So, was that a commission piece, or was that something where you were just like, "I'm doing it. I'm making oh, it." Oh no! I yeah, that was something I just decided to make. Because that was one of the things where it was the bears that inspired me. Because I had three identical bears, and I, I when I got them, I don't think I realized they moved. And then I think I pulled them out of the box. And I'm like, "Oh, that one's broken." And then I realized all the arms moved. I'm like, oh, man, I got to do this. And that was probably the one that I got the most people that would react to it. Because if you got it, you were like, oh, no, that is not right. That's wrong. And if you didn't get it, somebody next to you got it, and then they had to explain it. So I got the joy of seeing somebody explain human centipede to somebody who'd never seen it before. Oh, so God. that was fun. And that's always uh, and, a, an interestingly awkward conversation to witness, too. But when it's bears, it's funny. That see, it's got to be funny. Because you've got funny. the cute, the cuteness of the bear, and then that twist of the human centipede combined is yeah. just very girl. Yeah. <laughs> so the best thing is that the the woman who bought put it in her office at home. So she's like, my husband's gonna kill me. And she's like, I don't care. But that's not what she said. You know, she used colorful language. Yes. And she's like. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm like, all right. And then she sent me a picture of it. And she's like, my husband tries to cover it every day. And every <laughs> and there's right there. And he would put the sheet over it. And every day she'd come into her. She works from home. And so she'd pull the sheet down. And it was it was hilariously funny. It so, was like the unveiling. Just like, all right. Take the bears that was, out today. That was a good one. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, I, I, I would do a Freddy house if somebody asked me for a Freddy house. I did a faithful recreation prop as a Halloween prop. It was beautiful. I remember seeing that thing. Yeah. Well, here's the, here's the awesome thing. So okay. I'll, I'll try to make this brief. Um, <laughs> so I made a large version, and then I made three half versions of the same house. Oh, right? wow. And I recreated it. No guys off the internet. Like, I had to, like, math to try to get all the angles and everything right. And so I brought uh, uh, one of them to the big one, to Spooky Empire, I think the spring after Heather Langenkamp was there, so oh, okay. it was the spring after. So I'm standing, I'm out in the hallway. This is at the Wyndham. I'm out in the hallway, my regular spot, yes. and Heather Langenkamp comes by, and she walks in front of my space. She, she walks about a foot away. She stops in her tracks and walks <laughs> backwards, and she's like, "Did you make this?" And I'm sitting there going, "Oh snap!" 
Heather Langkamp's going to like rip me a new one because, right. you know, I, it, it's, it's copyright, you know, and I'm right. like, I don't want to get copyright infringement and, you know, I don't know what all the rules are, you know, right. it's an artist anyway. And, she, and I was like, yes. And she goes, this is by far the best recreation of this house I have ever seen. And I'm like, wait, Yay! I just, let's continue our conversation. It was amazing. So we sat, she sat there, she talked to me for like 20 minutes. She's supposed to be at her table or wherever she was supposed to be. And then they're talking to me about this house. And she's like, you should make kits and you should do it this way. And you know, oh, and she's Heather, like all on marketing for it. And she said, so this was my large one. So it was the same size as the one in the movie. Oh, wow. Like, huge. And so she goes, you need to make these smaller because this footprint's really large, you know, yeah. for somebody to buy this, it's just really big. And I said, oh, okay, well, when Heather Langenkamp tells you to make the Freddy Krueger house smaller, you right. make it smaller. Yeah. So the next year, three smaller houses, and I brought them. Uh, so uh, they're, they're a challenge, though, to make. They're not easy. So, J.D., in answer to your question. <laughs> in a roundabout way. In a way. If you commission me to make one, I will be happy to do so. <laughs> There. You got the uh, the horns up from PD there in the chat, and JD says it was beautiful. Um, nice. Johnny says that you could have just called it, you know, fan art. It's, it's it, a yeah. fan art piece. Yeah, she didn't seem to think it was a big deal, and it wasn't like a hundred percent correct. But right. um, it it was. I used it as a door blocker for my Halloween party, so I needed to make it big and look real. And right. Yeah, it was fan art, you know. I mean, I don't do faithful recreations of really anything for that reason, because uh, I like to have my own art. But she, I mean, she dug it. She really liked it. She ended up buying some matches from me. So. Oh, yay! Oh, so I'm like, girl, buy this house. She goes, I can't take that on my carry on. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. So that's why, that's why like, she wanted you to make it smaller, so she could have bought it and stuck it on her carry on and take it home with her. No, yeah, I so I ended up selling that at that show, and then my other three I sold at the next show. But yeah, it was an amazing experience. That was my my one on one with Heather Long in camp. Now, how so long like, did it take you to do like the bigger one and then the smaller ones? That probably took a lot of time, I'm assuming. Uh, well, it just it depends. If if I know what I'm doing, <laughs> it goes fast. Uh, so like the first one I made, the we're talking about the Freddy house, right? Yes. So the first Friday house I made took forever because I didn't know what I was doing. Like I said, there was no like plans. There was no like, this is how you make a Freddy Krueger house. So right. I had to find the movie online, pause it, take look the at pictures it in, in uh, Patricia Arquette's lap and say, okay, well, it looks like it's about two inches off of her thighs. So let's go. I was like this whole math thing. I oh, wow. do math. Yeah. So that one took like, and then you have to let it all dry because it was all paper and mache. Right. Um, and when I do stuff, I like it to be good from all angles because I don't know how somebody's going to look at it. So right. I don't want to be like that. So that first one took me like three weeks to make. Oh, wow. And, so, and then when I did the second one, of course, I had to go back and adjust all the math, which, of course, I didn't keep. So I had to redo the math <laughs> and then do it again. Oh, uh, and then the smaller ones took about a week. That's not to do. Bad. So, no, and now I know how to do them, and now I have all the plans. Somebody was telling me I should sell the plans to those houses. So I that's don't know. A, maybe... You know, people sell little blueprint things like on on Etsy. That's not a bad idea. I bled a lot when I made that house. I probably wouldn't wish that on any on anybody. <laughs> oh, I bet. So, oh my god. <laughs> it, it was that... it was it was beautiful though. I do. I remember seeing that going. Oh my god, that's perfect. <laughs> I'll probably, I, I might bust out another one sometime soon. I, they're fun to make. I mean, you know, anything's fun to make. Oh, yeah. But that, that one, yeah, that one just, it just takes some time and it's all, um, it's all uh, Elmer's glue. So it just oh, takes nice. forever to dry. And it's a very unique piece. It's not a piece that you walk by that I've ever, other than you doing it, I've never seen someone else at a convention do it. That's because I like to be unique. You are a very unique girl with your stuff. So, again, absolutely love it. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we got any other questions in the chat. Questions. questions. And I think we answered this already, but I'll ask it again. JD's asking, do you ever freak people out at conventions as they walk by, by yes. your booth? Yes. And, you know, I will tell you this. My favorite, absolute favorite thing in the world 
is when I freak people out at Spooky. <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know why? Because we're at a horror convention. It's hard to freak it's people out of that crowd. People out at that crowd. So I wear it as a badge of honor when some big, you know, six foot seven dude walks by with tattoos and he's like, nope, uh uh-uh. <laughs> No, I ain't even going near that booth. And I'm like, oh my God, I love it. Like, what are you know, talking it's, about? It's, Come here. Come check this out. Like, Daddy, I want to look at the dead babies. And he's like, uh-uh, not in my house. Not in my house. She's like, keep, I, keep going, kid. I, I love it. I love freaking people out at horror conventions. I just, I love it. It just makes my heart happy. I don't know well, why. A lot of people have I'm that meant- weird fear of dolls anyway. And then when you add your spin to it, it makes it even well, better for us, but worse for the people that have that fear. Oh, yeah. I have found that people either are petrified of dolls or they're petrified of clowns. <gasps> Combo. Oh, oh, trust me. I have done one of my favorite. I do, I've do. i done a couple of clown dolls. And one of my favorite ones that I've done is I did a, a Gacy baby. <gasps> so I did a naked oh, baby with a Gacy face painted on it. Yes. Um, and I've done a different renditions they're all different uh, right now i have one that's got uh his taco pin collection because he likes tacos he may be a serial kill cl- siller, serial killer clown but he likes him a taco to be fair i'm pretty sure everybody loves tacos, tacos. you can't go wrong so, with tacos <laughs> He's, yeah, so he's in my he's in my Etsy shop right now uh but i love it because people will be like that is no uh no no and i'm like you're welcome that's awesome. Now, I know um, you do a lot of, like, your convention sales. Um, your Etsy sales, are you shipping, or are you doing a pickup only, or how do you do yours? I totally ship. Uh, you know, obviously things take a little longer right now with the post office. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I ship worldwide. I mean, I'll ship anywhere. Are you in Latvia, and you want a doll? I'll get you one. <laughs> I'll get I'll get it there. We'll figure it out. Don't you worry it to you we'll figure it out yeah no i sh- i ship everywhere I, you know if, if now if you're local here in orlando and you go online and you're like i want you know color changing devil baby uh <laughs> you know talk to me uh because if you're local and you can come and pick it up and uh, we'll do contact free pickup you know that's fine uh, just let me know that way you don't have to pay the shipping that's awesome and then i see um we've got a mutual friend in the chat jack napier he says that he needs to get a custom one he needs a baby clown for his collection uh, I can totally make a baby clown happen, Jack. You just reach out to me on DeviantDolls.net. That's my, uh, that'll have my landing page. So that's my Etsy, my Instagram, my Facebook, my email. That I love to do uh, custom. So nice. Get get your baby clown on. Get your baby clown on. I love get your baby it. Clown it's it's on. so awesome. And I've got Alex. You stop it. Alex is in there going, "What depends on the taco?" Alex. Everybody knows beef tacos are the best tacos. That's <laughs> tacos with margaritas are the best tacos. Really, any tacos. Any, I don't care what kind of taco it is. I don't care. I'll eat any taco you put in front of if me. If it's got a tortilla, it's in my mouth. I don't care. Girl, if it's got a margarita on the side, it's in my mouth. I'm like, I'll eat that taco. <laughs> but see, once once we can get back to the norm, we need to do a taco margarita night. Yes. I'm all for that. I'm all down for tacos margaritas. That would be I love fun. It. There is never a bad time for tacos and margaritas. Never a bad time for tacos. And I think the world needs a taco now. Really. <laughs> it does. I think the world needs a taco. That's just me, though. <laughs> Alex said he's going to leave that one alone. I think you should there, smartass. I th- <laughs> right? There's dolls present. There, right. There it's are babies a- present. I have one of my babies. children's in the back there being weird on my chair. Sorry, Cherry. He didn't mean that. They have feelings too. Yes, especially yeah. Cherry. She's a sweet, innocent one. Aw, she. I love her. She's she's my favorite. She's my. I like her too. I do too. Show her again. <laughs> Let's show the folks that are just tuning in because I've got a couple new people uh-huh. popping in that need to see. Hi, people. Need to see her, Alex. They are not dead babies. They are alive. Well, some of them bite. <laughs> you got to be careful. Let's see here. Can I get her all in here? I'll back up a little. You bit. might. Oh, you... look at her. So See, for those of you just is- tuning in, the, these are the kind of amazing things that Linda creates for your enjoyment. Okay, There's yeah. Tack of the Killer Tomatoes inspired baby. There's a tomato face. Oh, God. Is that googly oh, eyes? Girl, you know it's googly oh, eyes. That's for the win. 
googly eyes and angry eyebrows because that makes it funny. It does. I like it. With the dolls, I like to do an element of pretty or funny in each doll. You know, yes. I like to make them scary, but if you can, if I can put in just a little like funny thing or a really cute little pretty thing, I like to do that. It makes yeah. them more approachable because I tell people if you're laughing at it, it's not funny. I mean, it's not scary. <laughs> if you're laughing at it, it's not scary. You can't be afraid of it. No. And they've all got that lovely little charm to it. Yeah, I try to, you know, I mean, they've evolved when I first started doing these they were all like strictly horror if you go back and you look at my original like my my first couple of pieces I was doing it was you know strictly you know blood out of the eyes and no faces and heads cut off you had some Cenobite ones in there too you had like a pinhead one didn't you I did I had a pinhead one well kind of a pinhead one he had spikes um so they were all strictly horror but then as you know, I've evolved, the dolls have evolved, so now I still do horror dolls, uh, but I do some campy ones, too, because they're just fun. They're they fun are. to do. Those are my favorite ones to do, are the campy, weird ones. Awesome. You know? That's awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead, we'll wrap this up. We'll let you get back to, <laughs> to finishing your whiskey, and I'm going to finish my drink and be nice and lazy, so... Uh -huh. If you want to hit up Linda for a commission, visit her website, DeviantDolls, with a Z, dot net. All of her information is there, her Instagram, her Facebook, her Etsy's. Make sure that you like her, that you're following her. Buy some dolls, commission some artwork, support yeah. your local artists. Do the spooky virtual weekend. Yes. It's going to be fun and awesome, and it's going to take your mind off of all the craziness. Yes. Come out and with us I can't wait to see what they've got for us I'm sure they're gonna post gonna some fun. stuff soon I'm excited it's gonna be fun well thank you so much for letting me come and hang out and play with you I love doing these things I just love talking to people about what I do so I sincerely appreciate you letting me have uh, let's see your 53 minutes of your time tonight. <laughs> You've been awesome. Thank you so much, Bye. Linda. And everybody that's watching, thank you guys for hanging out, for tuning in. Um, don't forget to like Linda on DeviantDolls.net. Follow her on Facebook, Instagram again. Thank you once again, Linda. I appreciate you. And until next time, guys, keep it spooky. Bye.